Greetings, 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 and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. It's so good to be here with you. Ah, let's see, is this phone? Okay. Um, how are you doing? How is everything during these times that you are all together and uh, I guess cooped up? Well, it's been tough. It's been tough for so many of my clients and uh, it's it's been challenging. It's been great. What is it that they say? Folks who play together, stay together. Well, how is it going on for you? Hi, Claudia. How are you? How is it for you? Are you are you finding yourself more challenged during those times? And I wanted to talk about how we overcome challenges, how we overcome this time that I've had um, two moms reach out to me and say that they are feeling more frustrated and that their partner, their husband is at home, the kids are home and they just cannot find a time for themselves. So what is it? You're good. How are you? I'm wonderful. I'm doing good, actually. Uh, let's see. I think the phone is tilted just a bit. There we go. Um, so these are times of challenge. And one of the things I shared with her was, is everybody healthy at home? And she said, yes. And my question was, would you rather be sick and stay home or would you be, would you rather be healthy and everyone is healthy and stay home together? And that was something that she said, you've got a great point. So we don't necessarily think about all the good that it can come out of here but we see all the negatives and the challenges and the frustrations. So today I wanna to talk about a few things. I even wrote them down. And one of the things I came up with, ah, why is this rotating on me? All right. One of the things I came up with, we are not in things or out of things. We just are. We're just our present, we are just with this. And being for those who have children, yes, I know it's uh, this constant um, coming up with things to do with your children, but look at the bright side. Most probably your children have not had you together for such a long time. And they are literally looking up to everything that you do, everything you say just like sponges. They are taking everything in. I live in an area that has two trails. If you've seen any of my posts and everything, you, you know that I live in an area that we have two hiking trails and it's been amazing. You know what's the amazing part? That there are more people hiking in this area with their dogs, and their children and folks who are hand in hand than ever before. Just two days ago over the weekend, we had 36 cars parked all the way down and we had never seen anyone up this trail. It was this secret trail. But now it's just, we are outside uh, as I was, as they're passing by and I walked my dog and I came back and it's just, they're saying hello, they're going for a jog, they park over here. Even when it rained, one person brought the umbrella, literally brought the umbrella for one of the other ladies and held the umbrella for her as she was coming to the car. So I think in a way, this entire thing has brought a community together. Uh, brought us togetherness more than feeling frustrated. But I want to talk about the ones who are cooped up. And I 
they have nowhere to go. For those who don't have more than two rooms to go. But what, what can we do? What can you do if you feel you are stuck and you don't see something out? I started a, a group a while ago and it was two years ago and we started doing this daily affirmations and daily journaling and then we started sharing it together and once a week we had a zoom call that it was where we are how we are feeling the pain how we are feeling our challenges and frustrations and we started helping one another overcome those challenges and see the bright side just like any hero's movie, there is the hero, there is the villain, right? But we have all that in ourselves. We have the hero within us and we have the villain within us. Sometimes we feel like a victim. So I want to know, do you feel victimized? Diane says, I love hiking as well. Great. So that's one of the things I wrote in here. Um, yesterday I did a Skype with a client of mine and before when he was coming in, he came in for panic and anxiety. So yesterday when we were talking about it, he was sharing that how he cannot go to work and the work, everything is shut down. And that has created more frustration for him because he feels unproductive. And because he feels unproductive, he doesn't know what to do at home. Because the children are doing something, the wife is busy with the kids. And I said, what would be productive? What can you do at home? And he says, I can't find anything to do other than read. And what he reads is nothing but the negativity. He's so consumed with all this, because he had anxiety, he was so consumed with all this negative information. So I said, what does your home need dealing with that you had not taken care of? He says, well, I can do something at the garage, but I just don't feel like it. So by going through a lot of things that maybe he can tackle. Believe it or not, I got a beautiful message this morning. He messaged me and said, not only I started um, putting the garage together, we have things for garage sale now. You see, not only he started to become productive, he got away from the media for all this negativity, right? Law of attraction in a way is, it's not to say I'm attracting all the good, I'm attracting positive, I'm attracting this, but law of attraction. Why is this music suddenly louder than myself? Okay, law of attraction is for us to generate positive energy and start oozing from that beautiful energy and creating a rippling effect. So by going to the garage, his message was, my son started helping me and we, as they were taking things out, he found things from his college years and they sat together, found a baseball mitt that he had, that he used to play with his father. And believe it or not, his son brought his baseball and they started throwing. So what he was saying is for the first hour that they started cleaning the second hour they played that bond of father son that was created is far greater than any media 
than any fear, than anything else. So my question to you is, if you were to just literally stop all this media, listening to the news, listening to the radio, listening to all this blame games that is being blamed, and I'm not saying shut everything out, but because you are together, what can you do? It's like a storytelling. In the old days when grandparents got together with grandchildren, all they did was share stories, right? So from one cleaning garage, not only he felt productive, he had an incredible time with his son and talked about him and his father and the time that he got the mitt, the mitt, the baseball mitt. So that glove became a story. Now think about this. Months from now, maybe even years from now, his son is going to share this story that actually when they were all stuck together and he's going to share it maybe with his children or siblings are going to be sitting together. He will remember this. And that is the story that is going to be the rippling effect of one person feeling negative and from that negativity, finding something beautiful. So what is one thing you can do or have you started doing that you can create a new story and overcome all this negativity? It's good to be informed, but not live with it, right? So here's another thing. So many of us, and I know I have been, I don't want to say victim, but I used to do the same thing. That when my father used to have this saying, I used to repeat that and held on to what he used to say, either in negative or positive. But it was something that it was challenging me and it was derogatory and it was negative, not understanding what being an entrepreneur is because of being in the work environment and the corporate environment for 37, 38 years that he was in uh, until he came and started another. So because he could not understand what I'm doing, even right here, so many are stuck at home and they're starting Zooms. They are starting exercises. Yesterday, someone was saying they watch YouTube and they are doing exercises via YouTube and that's new. Hey, 30 years ago, Jane Fonda started YouTube exercises in her fitness and wellness online. On uh, It was on literally like you bought those HK uh, tracks and everything, or it was on TV. That woman was so far ahead of us. And now this is what we are doing every single day. So if I were to be stuck with my past and what he said and what is right, what is wrong, then there was no, there was no way that I could be here with you today. So how can we see the silver lining, find something more productive, playful. If you can find a game, Monopoly. I remember playing Monopoly when I was a kid with my cousins and everything. Oh my God, for hours, three hours, four hours, we were on the floor playing Monopoly. You know, Monopoly brings everyone together, especially household. Yes, it's good. It, it shows us how to buy real estate. It shows us how to um, find ways to uh, be good winners and good losers instead of sore losers. And 
it also brings togetherness. So Monopoly teaches a lot. Even what we picked as the thing that to move, everyone knew. I always picked the iron because I loved ironing. And maybe ironing in meant I like to make sure everything is wrinkle free or good. But you know what? There is no perfection. Hi, Manige. Hi, Nella. Hi, Heidi. Thank you for being here. There is no perfection. There is nothing in this world that truly is perfect. Humans are not perfect. What we do is not perfect. Your children are not looking for perfection. They are looking for the experiences and how we are overcoming these challenges. Thank God we're not in war. Bombs are not falling on top of our head. And that you are healthy. You are healthy at home. And for those of you who are truly going through challenges, um, feeling a lot of anger and resentment coming out, is it yours or is it because of the circumstances? Is it possible that those resentments have always been there and now they're coming to surface? You see, I help with my clients. I help them with evoking what was embracing the reality right here, right now. It's like we are getting to see a whole new face of who we are. Maybe you have suppressed so much and now you are so conformed in here, everything is boiling out. And how is your partner, the ones that you live with, how are they handling it? Are you being fair? So those are the questions that really you need to sit. Is it their fault? Playing games, it, can, it can't help. But putting music and dancing, here's one of the things that I also wrote and I wanted to share. See, I wrote a lot because I've been doing nothing but um, being expressive is one of the things. It's like finding this time to journal. Journal about what you fear. Journal about your wants. Journal about your dreams. From all this fear and everything, something good is bound to happen. If you are in a very bad relationship, you're getting to see the other person's care, want, nurturing, and everything. If you are in a good relationship, you are also seeing the care the nurturing and how they are holding space for you. And the same goes with children. Uh, it's okay to, I'm not saying it's okay to bicker, but bickering in itself, it's a banter, but having holding space so that the other person has the opportunity to speak their heart not the mind so much because the mind is a judge it analyzes and judges and criticizes but have you come to the point port the part and to the point to speak from your heart your desires your wants your needs even talk about from your childhood your stories do your children know your childhood stories? How you overcame some challenges? Because if you are here, you have truly overcome some challenges to be where you are today. Even owning this, what we call uh, internet, this uh, video, being able to afford this, not only for your children, for yourself, and for those who are by themselves and feel depressed and more depressed, 
I feel for you. But this is not making us more depressed because this is the time for you to share and express. Express it by writing, express it by moving, going out for a walk. Someone said they went hiking. And I would love to say, when you go hiking, use some incantation. It's like using movement with anything that is happening. Drop it, let it go. If there is anger, resentment, let it go. If you are walking around, then share this beautiful energy that we have with Mother Earth. Just imagine this red, red energy light that goes not only from your feet down to the ground, but from ground all the way to Mother Earth that soil that truly holds space for you. How can you hold space for your loved ones? That can be a challenge. So fear in itself, I was writing, what are you truly afraid of? Is it for your elders? Is it for your children? Is it because of financial loss and not being able to afford. You know, my father, bless his soul, he would always say, give money to you first. And I share this and my friend Virginia, who's a financial advisor says the same thing. Give back to you first. Even if we cannot put so much money and we're barely making it, a dollar a day, at the end of the month, it's $30. A dollar a day, $30 that was not spent on something we don't need. We just want it. And if you're going online and spending and then saying, well, I'm going to just buy, give myself some time to busy myself and then resent yourself for doing it because you're going to return it. That's the part. Put that dollar or $5, $10, a hundred dollars that you wanted to spend, put it aside and just bank it in another part. And that becomes your thing that you're giving back to you. I too have an elder at home. Mom is over 80. Do I, am I afraid for her health? I don't come from fear. I don't function from fear. Because if anything were to happen, she's at home. She is safe. We're not going out doing anything. So for me to be afraid for her health, it's not good doing any of us good. Does that make sense? Fear in itself is not here to do me good. She is safe. She is safeguarded. God forbid, if anything were to happen, that's when I come into a function mode to take care of something. For those of you who have elders and you must take them to the doctors and everything, you know, you already know to safeguard to put the mask, to wash your hands. It's, there is nothing I can say that you don't already know how to take care of. So what is the worst scenario that can happen? What is the worst scenario that can happen today? And those are the questions I want you to sit and think Think about it and write nothing to fear, but fear itself. Yes, uh, Roosevelt said that exactly. But when we think about it, what is the worst scenario? Who is going to suffer from this? Are you? Are you suffering? And if you are suffering, how are you suffering? 
literally write down everything. I had one of my clients that uh, she said for the first five days, it was fun. Now I don't know what else to do. And she has no time for me time. You know, if everyone is there and if you cannot find me time, don't laugh at this, go to the bathroom, close the door and for 15 minutes, do not come out. That's your me time. Think about it. Let them know that you're taking a bath, you cannot come in. You're taking a shower, you cannot come in. You know, it's, um, it's me time can be in the garage. Me time can be go sit in your car. Me time can be pretend you're asleep. Me time can be take a walk or be in the bathroom. And for those of you who have asked for my help, for doing meditations and everything in two days, today is Tuesday, starting Thursday, I'm going to start meditation and creating a private group. And this private group is going to be by invitation only. So you can apply for it. I'm going to start the group and I want you to apply to get in and I accept the invitation. Here's why, because I want to help those that are truly in need and feeling overwhelmed, overextended, undervalued, especially women. It is going to be core for women. I'm not being racist or I'm not doing anything. Nobody will give us me time. We need to create it for ourselves. Yes, Armina John. No one is here to give us anything. No one pays to us, pays for us. No one gives us anything unless we ask for it. And if you haven't asked, here's another thing. Why have you not? Ask for, you sit over there in that corner, do your thing. And you know what? I too need my me time so I can recoup. I can feel better. And then together we can do something. So when there is an argument, instead of raising your voice and yelling, bring the tone of the voice down. Again, back to the group. I don't want to jump by this. Let me know. DM me if you want to be a part of this private group. And it's going to be late at night when the kids are asleep. It's after 10 o'clock that we come and I help you through some deep rooted challenges, the pain you're going through either physically, emotionally, or mentally. And then we all come together to be part of this, to help one another. Let me know if you want to be part of this. And it's going to be a very small group of us coming together. So another thing, what do you imagine is going to happen if you start asking for what you want? Do you really believe they're going to say no? And if they're going to say no, why? Because they don't value your ask or they don't know how to say yes to you. Have you enabled them? Have you given them everything? Have you done everything for them and now they don't know how to do things on their own without you? Think about that. We are in such small proximity that this is the time for you to start honoring each one of family members and knowing that you each are there because you chose to be. And for those who say, I didn't choose this, I have something to say. Where you are today is exactly where you need it to be. So we have to be grateful that 
because of the luxuries that we don't have at this moment, that we have had the opportunities and we're going to have the luxuries again. For those who did not have family time, so much family time together all the time that they didn't see each other during dinner, during breakfast, excuse me, when going to the bathroom, coming out of the bathroom, sometimes it's like, oh my God, my mom and dad are holding hands or there is bickering and there is fighting and everything. That is the reality. Proximity brings who we are out. So we have to be grateful. We are getting to know one another. If your children had some issues at school, maybe now it's time that they are expressing it. It's time for you to get. So I know everything is being delivered. Even alcohol is being delivered and that can stimulate and make things worse. But when we do things with more love and care and nurturing, this is the best time also to overcome habits and behaviors that we no longer wanted. So in a way, thank you to everything that is happening. So we are blessed just being present. We are blessed and if you are in pain, realize you're not the only one. For those of you who are going through this, this too shall pass. You have overcome so many other things. This is time to bring togetherness. Reach out to the ones who need your help. I am here for you. So today I could have put the music and danced and that's what I do. I have been writing, expressing, Skyping with my clients, those who didn't even know this beautiful putting headphones on, literally this headphones, putting my headphones on and Skyping is so much beautiful because when they hear my voice and they close their eyes, the sound that penetrates straight into our subconscious, into our heart, it's so powerful. Thank you, Mark. Thank you for being here. Susan, how are you all? I am here for all of you. Thank you for being present, even right here, right now. So write down your challenges. If there is anything I can help you with your challenges, by all means, I will respond. Um, what is it that I wrote? I thought this was so, so apropos. Unfairness in relationship is that feeling unfair, uh, that this is so unfair that this is happening to you are. That unfairness is like um, you're playing into the victim mode, playing into blame mode. Get out of there and find something that is more fair more fair to you. And who is truly angry? Is it you or is that tantrum child within you that it's not used, uh, used to being confined, being told what to do, right? So those are things that I want you to think about, write down, write down, What is unfair? Who is feeling unfair? If there is resentment coming up, by all means, write that. And what exactly is fair? What is professional? What is right? What is wrong? Because none of them really matter, except how we are coping with it. Wonderful. 
Hi, Shaka John. I'm glad you're doing good, Mark. And for those of you who need more information and if I can help you shift something, by all means, DM me, message me. I am here for you. And for those of you who want to be a part of that meditation empowerment group, and it's going to be late at night starting Thursday, let me know, raise your hand, do an emoji, send me a message. I can't see much from here, from my news feed. Uh, you know, I have to get used to how to do this. So do you know where I'm sitting? I'm sitting in my bedroom. Yes, I love this maroon uh, background. I love the color of maroon. I'm getting to learn so much of what feels good. Going out on a hike, being one with nature, knowing my colors, knowing so much about myself. And yes, even the bickering that happens with my mom, it's like sitting back and thinking, why did she say this? And she even said it. Seems like you've been here cooped up too long. And I said, I chose this. I chose to leave my condo two years ago to come and live with her. Was it the right choice? Mm, after so many years, but it was the right choice now. You see everything, if I say the word now, brings me to present. No one held me, no one handcuffed me. It was a choice. So choose to be realistic with your choices, with your decisions and take ownership. And then knowing that you can always make a different choice. You can choose something differently an hour from now, a day from now, a week from now. Yes, you can go against everything that everyone is saying and be susceptible to everything else. Those are choices. And we live our life because of the choices we make. So we can overeat, over drink, over do a lot of things. Wow. That, what is it? Someone said something to me said, if you're pointing a gun and blaming others, remember, although there's two points towards them, there's also two points towards you. So look at yourself, look at the things that are happening within you and turn this into this, into this, into this. And by doing that, we say, I accept myself. I appreciate myself. I value myself and the choices I have made, taking ownership to where I am today. What can I do now? Today's message, I hope it, it resonated with you. And that if you wanted to share, by all means, please do. And let me know if you want to be a part of this group late at night, doing meditation, exploring how to express versus suppress. God bless you. And thank you for being here. May the universal light surround you and protect you. Be safe. Bye-bye.